Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Number 9. Mesopotamian Venice In Iraq, scientists used drones to reveal the shocking truth about an ancient Mesopotamian city. This city is being called the Venice of the Fertile Crescent because of its unusual makeup. The urban settlement, known as Lagash, was made entirely of marsh islands connected by canals and waterways. Anthropological archaeologist Emily Hammer from the University of Pennsylvania helped reach this conclusion by using a drone equipped with remote sensing tools. The ancient city of Lagash hardly exists anymore. You can fly over the ruins of the city and see nothing except a vast swath of inhospitable desert. But 5,000 years ago, life flourished in this part of Iraq between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. The city of Lagash stood on marshy islands with no defensive walls and no urban center. It was a sprawling city where the only transportation was your own feet or a small boat. And because of the marshy terrain, the Mesopotamians had naturally irrigated farmland. But how did the researchers learn all this with a drone? The drone was able to map the ancient structures by taking high-resolution photographs. The structures aren't standing now, but there are still marks on the ground where they once stood. Then, using the remote sensing data from the drone and its photos, archaeologists put together what the city used to look like. They identified footbridges leading from one marshy island to another. They found temples, crop areas, city streets, and walls. Although the city wasn't walled off, certain sections of it were. These may have been high-status areas where the rulers of the marshy islands once lived. And now for number 8, but first, it's shoutout time! I want to give a big thank you to Lynn Thomas and Jimmy Martinez for supporting this channel. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos about amazing discoveries or dinosaurs or lost ancient cities. We've got it all! Number 8. The Village on Triquet Island An extraordinary ancient village has been discovered on Triquet Island in the Canadian province of British Columbia. The village was occupied 10,000 years before the pyramids in Egypt were built, and the island was only abandoned in the 1800s because of a smallpox outbreak. People had been living on its shores 14,000 years ago. In 2022, archaeologists undertook excavations around the more modern abandoned village, finding an ancient fire pit and pieces of charcoal. They also discovered fragments of fish hooks, obsidian blades, and simple hand drills used for starting fires. Alicia Gavro from the Hakai Institute said there are multiple sites on the island dating back over 10,000 years. She believes the reason the island was so heavily populated was because it remained ice-free during the Ice Age. When most of the area was under solid ice, Triquet Island remained one of the only habitable places. People were able to live continuously on the island, which led to the establishment of primitive settlements. Another shocking discovery was that the islanders may have been using boats to collect marine mammals and shellfish. The presence of obsidian tools means the islanders must have traveled long distances to acquire special materials that couldn't be found on the island. There were adventurous people living here 14,000 years ago. They used boats to follow the coastline and avoid the ice-covered interior. But they kept going back to the island because it was one of the few places that remained safe and stable during the Ice Age. Number 7. Atlantis in the Sahara Around the year 360 BC, the Greek philosopher Plato mentioned a city called Atlantis in one of his written works. I'm sure you've heard of it. He gives a fantastic description of what Atlantis looked like before it was supposedly washed away by the angry gods around 12,000 years ago. Plato said Atlantis was a monumental city that was organized in a series of concentric circles. There were watery circles banded by circles of neighborhoods and structures. It was like something out of a fantasy book, a remarkable metropolis built of black and red stone. There was a grand gateway that led from the outermost circle of water to the sea, allowing the Atlanteans to explore, and a great defensive wall surrounded each perimeter. It was a formidable place, seemingly unconquerable. The way Plato describes Atlantis in his work Timaeus and Critias brings to mind a very specific feature in North Africa. The Eye of the Sahara is a geological feature that includes five concentric circles and looks like a waterway outlet leading away from the eye. There is no evidence of a city ever being here, but the eye does look exactly like how Plato described Atlantis. 
The Eye of the Sahara, also called the Reichat structure, was found in the 1930s and was thought to be an impact crater. But then, in the 1950s and 60s, scientists started to speculate that the structure is in fact an ancient dome of molten rock, one shaped by years of erosion. But just because it's a natural formation doesn't mean it isn't connected to Atlantis. The Atlanteans could have easily built their city on the natural formation, following the contours of its concentric circles. Mainstream scientists say Atlantis is nothing but a myth. They say the Eye of the Sahara is nothing but a collapsed volcanic dome. But others argue that it was the site of Atlantis back when the Sahara was a green and fertile place populated by lakes and rivers. Unfortunately, though, there just isn't enough evidence yet to confirm or deny that Atlantis once stood in the Sahara Desert. Number 6. The Celto-Iberian City Around 2,000 years ago, there was a group of tribal warriors who lived on the Iberian Peninsula. They were known as the Celt-Iberians. They were doing all right for themselves up until the rise of the Roman Republic. In 195 BC, much of their territory was taken by Rome. And within 100 years, all of Celt-Iberia was under the dominion of the Roman Republic. The lands of the Celt-Iberians became the Roman province of Hispania Citerior. During recent excavations by scientists with the Polytechnic University of Madrid, the ruin of one of these ancient tribal cities was found. Researchers think the lost city is that of Tiriacos. If this is proven to be true, this city was a stronghold of the Celt-Iberians in the 1st century BC during the Sertorian War. The Sertorian War isn't something most people are going to learn about in a standard history class. It was an important but fairly small civil war fought between a group of Roman rebels and the larger government in Rome. The leader of the opposition was Roman general and statesman Quintus Sertorius. The people of Celt-Iberia had been absorbed into the Republic and wanted to get out of it. So, the civil war, which was raged between 80 BC and 72 BC, was fought for their liberation. The city of Tiriacos was the last sanctuary of the Celt-Iberians before the rebellion was squashed. And after 72 BC, the Celt-Iberians were no more. This is an entirely new discovery. Researchers say the only reason the ruins weren't found earlier is because they are camouflaged by a nearby quarry. Nobody ever realized they were there because the ruins are covered by a much more prominent mining operation. But now, scientists have discovered the remains of a Roman military camp, and they also found a fortress that was likely built to defend Tiriacos from attack. As for artifacts, researchers found evidence of conflict everywhere they looked in the form of projectiles and ancient weapons. It looks like this was the last stand of the Celt-Iberians before the Roman army demolished them and their city. Number 5. Okum Tun Dr. Ivan Sprach has been described as the real-life Indiana Jones. For the past 30 years, Ivan has been cutting his way through the remote jungles of Mexico in search of lost Maya cities. And yes, he's found his fair share. In 2013, the Slovenian adventurer brought his team to an ancient city that hadn't been seen since the 8th century AD. It was a monumental discovery because the city, which was called Chaktun, held at least 4,000 people during its peak. Then, the year after it was discovered, Ivan and his team found two more Maya cities, Lagunita and Tamchen. Each city boasted its own impressive pyramids and temples and each one was also abandoned about 1,200 years ago when the Maya civilization collapsed. Now, Ivan has found yet another abandoned Maya metropolis. This one is home to multiple pyramids rising 45 feet toward the jungle canopy. The city was found within the Balamku Ecological Conservation Zone of Mexico. Ivan named the city Ocomtun since there is no evidence for what it was really called before its destruction. Pottery extracted from this site indicates it was likely abandoned around the same time as the other cities in the Yucatan Peninsula, close to 800 AD. Unfortunately, though, this might be the last major discovery in this part of Mexico. In an interview with BBC Travel, Ivan said the ecological zone was the last black hole in the Maya lowlands. Nobody had explored this particular stretch of thousands of square miles up until Ivan came along. But now that he's mapped pretty much the whole thing, finding so many new cities, there might not be a lot left to discover, at least not in the Yucatan Peninsula. 
Now scientist Jesse to figure out why Okomtun and the other cities were abandoned abruptly 1200 years ago. It's as if every last person in the jungle simply vanished, leaving behind dozens of major cities. Number 4. Tenea Up until very recently, the lost city of Tenea was nothing but a story in Greek mythology. According to the legend, Tenea was built around the year 1100 BC by the prisoners of the Trojan War. Then, for a reason nobody can remember, the city vanished without a trace. However, in October 2018, the very real ruins of Tenea were discovered about 60 miles from Athens. And ever since, archaeologists have been busy excavating the site to learn more about its history. Most recently, four new neighborhoods in the city were uncovered. Researchers found a Roman sector, an area of dense buildings and shops likely used in commercial activity, a room filled with 2,100 coins that's believed to be the seat of a local government official, and a laboratory complex filled with furnaces and rectangular tanks. But researchers have found some other important features of the city as well, like a stone boundary wall and a burial monument. Archaeologists came across the remains of a child buried with bronze coins and lamps. And there are other structures they can't identify, but seem to have been involved in cultic activity. It's an area littered with offering figures, likely placed at the altar of some strange god. Unfortunately, researchers still don't know how the city disappeared. All the findings illustrate an economic powerhouse at the edge of mainland Greece. This was a prosperous city where almost everyone living in it was moderately wealthy. And yet something destroyed the city. Something happened that made people flee without their stashes of coins. Number 3. Rungholt Amazingly, another legendary city has been found in Europe, and this one is in Germany. Archaeologists have found and mapped the lost city of Rungholt. Just like Tanea in Greece, Rungholt was thought of as nothing but a legend until it was proven to be real in 2023. The legend is that Rungholt was swallowed into the sea following a heavy storm. The city had become so wealthy that it led to a plague of sin. The people in the city indulged in drunkenness and irreverence, and a local cleric was so disturbed by the selfishness and cruelty of the townspeople that he asked God to punish them. So God answered his prayers. Like Sodom and Gomorrah from the Bible, God destroyed Rungholt, completely wiping it from the face of the earth. In the Middle Ages, people used to say you could still hear the Rungholt bell ringing from the murky depths of the North Sea. Historians never really thought the city existed. It became known as the Northern Atlantis, which didn't help its reputation as being real. But then, it was found. Archaeologists from the Christian Albrecht University in Kiel discovered the remains of Rungholt buried beneath tidal mudflats. The city was absolutely enormous, stretching about 1.2 miles. But because this city was built on tidal flats, it got swept away during a sudden storm surge in 1362. The entire city is now buried beneath mud and completely submerged when the tide comes in. Trying to remove fragments of the city from the muck is a tiring job. Unfortunately, scientists can only do it when the tide is out. And even then, it's a nightmare. Number 2. Anazarbus The ancient city of Anazarbus is on the tentative list for a placement with UNESCO World Heritage. It's a magnificent ruin in Anatolia that was likely established in the Stone Age. Recent archaeological work has revealed prehistoric tools that suggest the city got its start long before sophisticated civilization ever reached Turkey. The city is currently home to monumental structures built during the Roman period. There is a great triumphal arch and the ruins of a bathhouse, as well as an amphitheater and a church. But now, the discovery of a prehistoric stone axe has flipped the history of the city on its head. The excavation team from Kukurova University says Anazarbus was founded around 5000 BC, or 7000 years ago. That makes it one of the oldest historical settlements in this part of Turkey. Up until this discovery, Anazarbus was only believed to be 2700 years old at most. It may have started as a city called Kundu that rebelled against Assyria in the 7th century BC. Then, in the 1st century BC, the city was annexed by the Roman Empire. It became the capital of Cilicia Secunda during the rule of Justinian I, who
who rebuilt it in 527 AD following a devastating earthquake. The city then met its final end in 1374 at the hands of the Mamluk Empire. Who established the settlement here 7,000 years ago is a baffling mystery. It would have been an ancient group of Stone Age humans, but there is no evidence for what they may have called themselves. Number 1. Lost Mexican Village Scientists working with the National Institute of Anthropology and History have made a huge discovery in Mexico City. In the Tlatelolco area, they discovered the remains of a village from around 450 AD, but today, very little of it is left. Archaeologists only identified the city by noticing constructive elements. For example, random stone alignments and post holes that were used in its creation. They think the city was likely built during the Teotihuacan era, but basically, nothing else about it is known. Researchers have found ceramics and human burials, but no full structures. The only thing they know for sure is that a city existed here, or rather, a small village on the outskirts of the larger Teotihuacan. The people that lived here may have produced ceramics, but the place is still a mystery. An interesting detail about the discovery is that the village was occupied at the same time as Teotihuacan, one of the biggest cities of the ancient world with upwards of 125,000 inhabitants. This city spanned a whopping 6.9 square miles and had over 2,000 structures, yet nobody knows who built it. The Aztec didn't build Teotihuacan, they merely found it later and assumed it was built by the gods. Thanks for watching. Which mythical lost city do you hope is found next? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up for more. See you next time. Bye.